like I told you before, he has already made an impact. He's been here less than 24 hours. And I asked him if I can go visit him this summer. I think the guy's fantastic. He has a certain charisma about himself. Uh, he's one of the greatest college football coaches in the history of the game. Great athletic director. Let me introduce you to him. I have a couple things on Coach Alvarez, look at this man. Head coach in Wisconsin. I know you guys all watch this team. From 1990 to 2005, tough, aggressive, hard nosed, just like we all want to be. Won three big team championships, 1993, 1998, and 1999. Won the Rose Bowl three times. That is a fantastic feat. Okay, 1993, AFCA Coach of the Year. 1992, Bobby Dowd, Coach of the Year Award. 1993 and 1998, Big Ten Coach of the Year. Current Athletic Derek Director at Wisconsin. Member of the College Football Hall of Fame, Coach Barry Alvarez. Thank you, Coach. Thank you very much. Uh, certainly an honor and a privilege to have the opportunity to come and speak to you guys today. Um, have a lot of respect for the football in, in Louisiana. Uh, a lot of respect for the high school football here, all at all levels, actually. I've never been down here, never seen the stadium, heard about the atmosphere here. Had, when I had the opportunity to come down, I jumped on it. I wanted to be here, wanted to see what it, what it was all about. I've known Coach O for, from, a, from a distance and always admired uh, what he represents and how he goes about the business. And uh, The thing that I see is someone who really cares about kids. And I, I was a high school coach for nine years. I used to love to come to these clinics. I'd travel around, I'd go to as many as I could, listen to as many coaches as I could, pick up as much as I could, try to absorb it all. And then the, the, the key thing, guys, is not to come here to try to find an offense or defense, but learn something that you can implement into your program at home. And if it's one term, it might be some term that some coaches coach uses out there in teaching something. If you can take that home and you can teach one of your players Better because of the term that you used here, it was worthwhile to be here. So, uh, in trying to prepare to, uh, on what to speak about today, uh, you know, I've done several of these, but I, I thought rather than, I'm not going to talk about X's and O's like and Coach O talked already about changing the culture and changing culture when he came here. Um, I thought I'm gonna, what I'd do is talk about the things I believed in. I went to the University of Wisconsin in 1990, and it was not a good program. I was at Notre Dame at the time. Um, when I told Lou Holtz I was gonna take the, 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 the Wisconsin job, he told me, don't do it. I can get you a real job. Don't take that job, it's a terrible job. But I felt it was a good job. and. Um, Felt like I, I, I knew enough about it that I could take it. But when you take a job like that, you have to go in and establish the culture. You have to change the culture. It's a losing culture. I think they won 12 games the five previous years uh, that, that, I, that I took over. I lit it up my first year. I won one game. I kept them right on pace. And, uh, but we did, you know, we, we had a vision. We didn't compromise anything. I was able to put the really good staff together, and I knew that. Kevin Cosgrove, one of the uh, new members of the staff here, was on my original staff. Um, but I, I just thought I would, I would talk about some of those things. And, you know, when, when Coach told me, you're crazy, don't take the job, he called me a month later and he said, how's it going? I said, Coach, you underestimated the situation. It's a hell of a lot worse than you thought. <laughs> But when you take over a losing program you, and you have to change the culture, you have to change the attitude and expectations associated with the current program. You have to teach people how to win. That means everybody that touches a program, not just your players. That's the equipment people. That's the people in the training table. That's in the training room. Anybody that talks to your the ticket people, anybody that talks to your players is associated with your players, they have to understand what you expect of them, how you expect them to deal with the players. 
that's an overall thing. When I, I first walked in the first day at Wisconsin, had two secretaries sitting there, both in sweatshirts, blue jeans, smoking cigarettes. So this is going to change. It's going to change fast. We're going to change everything in here. We're going to clean this place up. and gave them restrictions, and that's where we started. But that, that's where the program was at that time. I was very fortunate uh, in my career. I had really had great tenure uh, mentors. Uh, I had a tremendous high school coach, good program in Western Pennsylvania. Went to Nebraska. I played for Bob Devaney, guy that I idolized. I thought he was way ahead of his times. He was. He was way ahead of his time back in the '60s on how he practiced, uh, what he did. Hard-nosed guy, could get along with everybody. Um, really gave me a foundation of what I believed in. Uh, I told you I worked as a high school coach for nine years. I got a break. Hayden Pry um, left North Texas State, went to went to Iowa. Iowa hadn't had a winning season in 17 years. Hayden took the job, and I was fortunate to be on his first staff. See how he operated. He was a great mentor, particularly one of the things that he did on a day-to-day -day basis. And then after eight years there, I uh, got a call one day from, from Lou Holtz at, at Notre Dame. Uh, he convinced me that making a move to Notre Dame was the right move if I wanted to be a head coach. And it ended up being, uh, that, was the right, that was the right move for me. Um, the thing that I learned working for, and, and being with all three of those guys, so when you go in and you take a program, wherever you are, whatever school you're, you are right now, you have to have a plan for success. You have, a, have to have a plan on how you're going to do things, how you're going to win. And I'll go basically with Hayden and Lou. Totally different philosophies on how they went about their business. Hayden Fry was a psychology major. He was a quarterback. He would rather trick you than knock you down in the dirt. When we practiced, he would never allow a one against a one. He'd never let a starting offensive tackle go against a starting defensive tackle, one-on-one -on -one pass pro, one-on-one -on -one second. He'd never let that. He, he wanted to give, his, his philosophy was, I want my guys to walk off the field feeling positive every day. I want them to have success. Now, he was an offensive coach. I was on the defensive side of the wall, of the ball. So in spring, in, the defense had to line up in base defense. You couldn't do anything on defense. And we'd get very upset. And then the offense would try, they just tried to tee off on you. But in the long run, it made us better because had, we had to play base defense. You had to learn fundamentals. You had to do all those things right. But I never really believed in his philosophy um, and how he went about practice how he went, you know, his, 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 his game planning, you know, it's a lot of, you know, a lot of big plays, not, not concerned more about field position, so on and so forth. Was he successful? He's a Hall of Fame coach. He was successful every place he went. So what he did, um, we all believed in, and we sold it to our players. Now I go to Notre Dame. It's totally office, opposite. Lou is a tyrant. It's good against good every day. And if you're the quarterback, he's going to make your life miserable. You're going to be miserable all week. And his philosophy was, if he can put up with me all week, walking in front of 100,000 at Michigan Stadium or any other big stadium, national TV is going to be a piece of cake. And it was good on good. How can you get better unless you go, unless you go don't go, or go good on good? That's the way we practiced. So which one's right? He's a Hall of Fame coach, successful every place he's been. They're both right. So what that showed me, you have to determine what you believe in. Then you've got to sell that. You've got to communicate that with your assistant coaches. They have to understand it and they have to believe it. And then sell that to your players and all buy into it. Decide what type of style you're gonna, you're gonna have. I go to Wisconsin. After going with, you know, looking at Lou and, you know, I'm coaching defense for, for Hayden and he's throwing the ball, he's punting on third down sometimes. I mean, you're, you're going crazy. 
you know, he go three and out, and then it's no big deal. Defense has to hold him. You know, you play, you're playing for, with Lou. You score a touchdown. The other team gets a little momentum. You have a lead. He holds on the ball for seven minutes, going down the field, running, the, you know, running option, running beer, milking the clock, field position. I figured out that's a hell of a lot easier coaching defense when you got a, when you got a coach like that and you're, he's thinking about field position. And then I take a look at take a look at Wisconsin. What kind of kids can I recruit consistently? You guys aren't from my from that part of the country. Some of you might be. But Wisconsin in that that area you have you have Germans, you have Scandinavians, you have big Swedes, big blonde hair, blue eyed, blue eared, shoulders this wide. They're giants. I can recruit those guys by the truckload. Not a lot of speed. Every once in a while we'll find some speed. But the most part, we're gonna, we, we know we can recruit big kids every week. We can have linemen all the time. And all you have to do is take a look at offensive lines around the country. You're going to see a lot of our guys playing, playing in the NFL. We can get that. So if we can get linemen, we can be physical. We can be sound. We can play with good fundamentals, not beat ourselves. That'll give us a chance to play against Michigan, Ohio State, those teams like that. If we want to win a conference, that's who you got to beat. And that's who we put our, that's how we designed our program when I went there. That's how we're going to, that's, that's what we're going to do uh, to beat these guys. We're, our guys are going to be every bit as physical. They may have better players, guys are more five stars and all that stuff, but our ass is going to line up and we're going to be just as physical as they are. And that's how we build our program. Run the ball, play action, field position, don't beat yourself, don't make mistakes. All those things are what we've built our program and, and we've sustained it because of it. That's who we are. We don't have access to the number of skilled players that you have here. The whole Southeast is filled with skilled players. We have to go find them. The further away you go, the less chance you get to get the top player. So we understand that. So that's how I decided uh, how we, the style of football we were going to play at Wisconsin. You have to clearly define roles for everybody involved with the program. Clearly define roles for your staff, exactly what you want out of them, what their responsibilities are. They in turn have to explain the same thing with your players. I'd meet with my players just like this, an auditorium just like this started the year during two -a days. I give them the same talk every, early in camp. Understand, we don't have tryouts every week. You establish your role in spring practice, and in camp. Your role may be, you may be a starter. You may be somebody that's gonna be playing some. You may be a backup. You may be on the scout team. And you know what, if you're on the scout team, that's important. Because if you have to do a good job of emulating our opponent, or if you don't do a good job, we're not prepared to win. You may be on special teams, and that's really important because that's field position. So regardless of whatever your role is, it's important for our success. That has to be sold to your players. Know what your role is. Pay attention to detail. Dot the I's, cross the T's. Don't take anything for granted because the minute you do take something for granted, it's gonna blow up in your face. You think, you know, it, it may seem very simple to you but understand, these kids haven't studied football. The players haven't studied football. They don't know exactly what you want. You know, I just, I'll give you a couple examples. What we'll do, and, and most of you do this, or maybe you're, you do or you don't. We start every year, um, the week before our first game, we're gonna have a walk, we're gonna have a mock game. But we'll start the mock game with when you're coming from the hotel. You're getting, when you get on the bus, and basically, I tell the players on Friday night, and as a high school coach, you don't have to worry about this. You pick, a, pick your time when you want to start. Friday night, you're mine. You check everything else in. I want you focused on football. All right, Saturday morning, we're going to get on, we're going to have breakfast. 
I changed that. I used to have a, you had breakfast at eight o'clock or whatever time in the morning, and everybody would be sitting there on pins and needles hoping their kids didn't miss breakfast. And after a few years, I said, that's not very smart. You know, all you need is one guy to screw up the whole damn morning. You're playing a big game and some jack off shows up 10 minutes late, coach is upset, the head coach is raising hell with him, disrupts the whole, the, the, the whole team. So you, I said, what I did is I changed. We're going to give them, we'll give them two hours to eat. You come down, you have to eat during that time. Now I don't worry about anybody missing. We're going to get on the bus. We're going to go to the stadium. I want a quiet bus. I don't want anybody talking. We're going to a street fight. There's nothing funny about this. I don't need any stories. Bus driver, keep your mouth shut. No music on in here. They can wear headsets. They want to wear headsets. In the locker room, once you get in the locker room, this is how much time you have. This is where you're going to dress. This is when you're going out, and, and then we're going to parcel it out. And this is when you go. You go actually go through it. This is where you're going to warm up. This is where you're going to do individual. This is where you're going to do the group, and we do it. You go back in, so much time you have to go to the bathroom. You come back out, offenses this side, defense on this side. The position groups all marked off on the benches where you sit. This is the travel part. When offense is on the field, these are the guys that travel, walk with me. Defense is on the field, these are the guys who walk with me. You know why? Because if you don't do that, you got the whole damn team. You got 120 guys walking with you. So you gotta take time to do that. Helmets, they're on your head or in your hand. Why? First time, you know, as a high school coach, one of my early games, I call a kid, throw, put him in the game, he gets to the hash mark, he stops. Where's my helmet? Where in the hell do I know where your helmet is? I'm not going to chase helmets. So I got to take the time to go over. You only get burned one time. It doesn't take much time to go over. Dot the I's and cross the T's. Tell them, make sure people know exactly what you want. You teach winning 365 days a year. It's not just on game day. It's doing things right during the week, doing things right at practice, going to class, Paying for, don't, don't get tickets. If you get tickets, pay your tickets. Um, just doing things right. Being able to be on top of things so that when you get to football, you can focus and concentrate on football. Accountability. You know, I, I get asked so many times about kids today. If you're coaching today, still coaching, how would you coach? I coach the same way I coached. Coach them hard. Kids want rules, kids need leadership, they want discipline. The thing that you have to do is treat them, treat them fairly and be consistent with your treatment. Now, I think you have to understand, and I, I have this talk, I just had this with, all, I got 23 sports, and I just talked to all my head coaches and I went through this, and we have some problems. The kids of today, too many things are easy. Not a lot of stress. Everybody makes the all-star team. Everybody gets a trophy. They don't understand that a coach's job is to make them feel comfortable when you're uncomfortable. You know what I mean? You know, I get, you know, I get, I get more parents call me now as an athletic director about, about their kids. Coach is doing this, coach is doing that, so on and so forth. And pushing the kid harder than he wants to be pushed. So I tell my coach, you make sure, damn sure, when you recruit him, you tell him exactly how you're going to coach him. This is how we're going to be coached now. So and so is going to be your position coach. He's going to push you. If you screw up, he's going to be after you now. And I'll be right there behind him. Well, we're going to get, we're going to give you a hug as you walk off the field. It's not, that's not personal. Because when you go out and play some of these schools in our league, they're going to smack you in the mouth. They're going to keep smacking you in the mouth. And you better be able to respond to that and, and respond well. So make sure they understand how you're going to coach them. That your job is to make them feel comfortable when it's uncomfortable, when it's, when it's hot and it's fourth quarter and you got to win a game that they can perform and not take the easy way out. Do that before you get them. Do that before, before they sign the scholarship. Hold them accountable. 
hold them accountable, uh, have rules for them, have, have, make them accountable for, for their action. Um, the other thing that the kids of today, the other the thing that's different, I think there are many things different, but they're more aware. Social media, obviously, I mean, this is trite to even say it. Social media has changed the way we, we operate. I see our, um, our new, new, the, the old Texas Tech coach is getting a lot of heat because he's going to give breaks every 20 minutes for for a telephone, you know, for a telephone break. I don't know if you guys have seen that, but he, he's getting a lot of heat over the media. I thought it was a pretty good idea. I don't know if every 20 minutes is the answer, but I thought it was a pretty good idea. But you, know, you think about it, Coach. When we first started coaching, we talked about that earlier. I'd go out and I'd be in a kid's house in New Jersey, quarterback. I'd tell him, you're my number one guy on the board. You're number one. We need you there. Our whole program is going to be, be built around you. The next morning, I'd be in in uh, Pittsburgh, quarterback, I'd tell him the same thing. I'd be with Kaz down in St. Louis, I'd tell him the same thing. Now, when you, by the time you get to the car, it's, on, it's, it's already tweeted what you said, whether he likes you, and whether you're still in the hunt. That's how, that's how the world has changed in recruiting. Everything's out there, There's no, there, there are no secrets. Build chemistry on a team. I think teaching the team concept with, with, the kid, with the kids of today is difficult. That's, that's a coach's job. You will do them an injustice if you don't do that. I think this is one of the biggest jobs that we have as coaches, is to be able to teach the team concept because you don't see it as much. It's more about me and you. They you have to build into their thinking that they win and lose as a team. You win and lose as a team. We're all in this together. It's not about me getting yards or me completing so many passes. It's about us winning a game. And when we win, we're all rewarded. They all must have they all have to see the same common goals. You know, I, I read something, this was not long ago, and I talked to my, my staff about the same thing. I talked to my athletic department much like I talked to football football teams. And I'll talk, I'm talking about